Hi everyone, today we are talking everything about Botox or Neurotoxin Neuromodulator. Botox is actually a specific brand name and I'm gonna go through several of the brand names and tell you the differences between them so you have a better idea of maybe what's better suited to you. And then I'll tell you some of the medical indications and some of the aesthetic indications and some of the sort of the crossover indications and complications and that's it if you're interested in this feel free to like this video subscribe to my channel oh and i've also started something new which is really fun um if you care to follow me on instagram i put out the subject of the video i'm going to be filming and ask if you have any questions on the topic and then i take those questions and i incorporate them into the video so if you left me a question on botox stay tuned for the answer Okay, so if we go back in time, a long time ago, certain foods could be contaminated with a bacteria called Clostridium botulinum. And till this day, it can be found in honey. That's why we don't give honey to newborn babies. And this bacteria produces botulinum toxin. And what the toxin is, is actually just a tiny molecule. The way botulinum toxin works is if you have the ending of a nerve, and a muscle, the ending of the nerve takes up the botulinum toxin and can't release chemicals that tell the muscle to contract. Normally, our nerves signal to a muscle to contract and the muscle contracts, but in the case of botulinum, the botulinum toxin gets into the nerve and the nerve can't fire to tell the muscle to contract and the muscle is relaxed or flaccid. So when people would be poisoned with Clostridium botulinum, they would die from a flaccid paralysis. So they couldn't move their diaphragm to breathe, they couldn't protect their airway, they couldn't contract any muscles. These days, this tiny little molecule can actually really significantly help people. It's very commonly used in neurology. It really helps people who have um, dystonias, uh, contracted muscles, spastic muscles, um, twitching. A little bit of toxin can relieve these different problems. Other medical indications include migraine headaches, even plantar fasciitis. A little bit of toxin can relax um, and help with the plantar fasciitis so the pain isn't as severe. The crossover between, I would say, medical indications and aesthetics would include conditions like hyperhidrosis, where people experience excessive sweating on the palms of the hands or under the armpits or the soles of the feet, and injecting toxin there can relieve and sometimes even completely stop the sweating for anywhere from six to 12 months. So it can be life-changing for people who can only wear black because of the sweat stains under their armpits or you know, if they're afraid of shaking anyone's hand or holding anyone's hand because they're always sweaty. So it can have very impactful and um, meaningful um, results. Other indications that provide a lot of relief are migraine headaches that you inject around the head. I, I may have mentioned that in the medical indications. And also TMJ, TMJ pain. People who suffer from TMJ pain can have a lot of relief by having the masseter muscle injected. However, keep in mind that TMJ pain often has an underlying dental problem. So if you experience TMJ pain, uh, consider seeing a dentist for an evaluation. The other reason to inject the masseter is aesthetics. So now we're moving on into aesthetics and that is for a visual slimming of the lower face to create more of that heart shaped face. It narrow by, by um, parallel, you're not really paralyzing, but you're weakening the master muscle and you get a slimming down of the face. In aesthetics, the most common, I think when someone says Botox, the most common thought that comes to mind is forehead lines, 11s, and crow's feet, and everybody knows about that, but there are other indications that you may or may not know about moving down the face. Um, people who have a gummy smile can relieve the gummy smile by a little bit of toxin injection up here, 
or if when you smile your upper lip flips under and disappears you can do a lip flip which is a little bit of toxin here and it prevents that lip from hiding under and it leaves it nice and exposed when you're smiling um, other indications include a downturned mouth when the corners of your mouth are downturned a little bit of toxin can lift them back up again also a pebbly chin can be smoothed out with botox and a jawline can be sharpened with the Nefertiti lift, which is just a little bit of tox injected along the jawline to sharpen the jawline. And there's also microtox, which is a specific technique, and I'll talk about that later on in the video. And now let's get into the brands and the different products. Because there are several manufacturers that produce these neurotoxins, they have to each have their own twist on the product, not to infringe on each other's patents, and also to have one up on their competitor. But there are some commonalities. So I'm gonna go through some of these so that you can understand the differences and then maybe know which one is best for you. To put it really simply, the main differences between the products are how long they last and how big they are and how much they diffuse out from the injection point. Let's start off with Xeomin. In general, all of the neurotoxins come with a binding protein. Xeomin is the exception. It is but therefore the smallest molecule because it doesn't have a binding protein. And because it doesn't have that protein, you can think of it as a vegan friendly option or as um, the most natural form of neurotoxin. And because it's so small, it also diffuses the furthest, which can be good. It, gives, it can give a more natural effect. If you imagine two injection points, and the product diffuses quite a distance. If it kind of comes and blends together like that, you get a very smooth and even appearance. That can be an attractive feature of Xeomin. In some people, Xeomin doesn't last as long, so that is great if you're trying it for the first time and you don't know if you're gonna like it, and may not be great if you're one of those people that likes the results, but it doesn't last for you, and so you end up having to make more doctor's visits to get your injection. Next, let's talk about the most popular, which is Botox. Botox is the first and original neurotoxin. That one is made by Allergan. And this is the largest, or one of the largest. Juvo is also the, uh, as large. They're 900 kilodaltons. So it's a large protein complex, and that makes it diffuse less because it's a bigger product. So Botox and Juvo both don't diffuse too far out. And Dysport is somewhere in the middle. That one is about 300 to 500 kilodaltons. So Xeomin is 150, Dysport is 300 to 500, and Juvo and, or Juvo and Botox are 900, the largest, so they diffuse the least. Now, another factor to keep in mind is how much active neurotoxin is present in the product. And when it was tested, it was found that actually Dysport comes in the largest concentration of the actual neurotoxin. And that's probably why it kicks in the fastest and it lasts the longest. So even though it's not as big as Botox and Juveau, it comes in such a large concentration that it has longer it has a longer lifespan once it's injected now there is one more neurotoxin i didn't mention it's called daxi and it's at the tail end of fda approval right now this is actually a very small molecule it's uh, 150 kilodalton so it's the same size as xeomin but it has a different configuration to it it's made differently so that one is said to last six months most facial injections last approximately three months they take about two weeks to fully kick in and they last three months this one is supposed to last six months so if you're trying it for the first time you're not sure you might like it Xeomin is a great one to try because it's got that softer effect and it may not last as long although again that depends so you'll see how long it lasts on you and if you know that you like it um, you want it to last a long time then this upcoming new and improved Daxi might be the way to go 
The most common desired effect when injecting toxin is to eliminate lines and wrinkles, and that's done through paralyzing or significantly relaxing the muscles. So in the forehead, the frontalis muscle, when it's um, relaxed or paralyzed, it can't lift up your eyebrows and you don't wrinkle, or the same with the 11s or the crow's feet. Now there's another technique called a microtox, and the goal here is to really inject just underneath the skin. So you're primarily hitting just that where the, where the muscles insert into the skin, the um, facial expression muscles, and that can reduce pore size and improve texture in the skin. But generally, the, what happens when you do microtox is you need to inject many, many, many more points on the skin than you would if you're doing the standard injections. And for results like, for instance, diminishing of pore size, I think um, something like a chemical peel or laser resurfacing will give you more pronounced results that will actually last. Whereas because this is a neurotoxin injection, injecting these points won't last as long. In fact, microtox doesn't last as long as a regular Botox injection because you inject so much less product and so superficially. So the muscle throughout its length isn't really affected, it's just affected at the very part that touches the skin. So you have to poke the skin many more times and inject just a tiny dusting of product that doesn't last as long and the results can be, in my opinion, achieved through more meaningful uh, techniques that are long lasting, like lasers, resurfacing lasers, or even chemical peels. So that's my view on it. I don't necessarily think it's worth the money. It may be if you're focused on one specific thing, for example, microtox under the eye can really smooth out the um, fine lines underneath the eye. However, again, if you laser there on a regular basis you may, and you use a retinoid uh, underneath the eye, you will increase your natural collagen and you'll have permanent results. Whereas injecting microtox, I think it's okay if you, you know, if you need it for an occasion, if you want it for a period of time, but really you have to be doing the work to sort of strengthen that skin and improve collagen production to make it more of a permanent result. Basically think of microtox as very diluted Botox injected very superficially. You need a lot more pokes and it doesn't last as long. Moving on to complications, I would say there are three categories of complications. The first one, every time you break the skin surface, there's a risk of bleeding and infection with the tiny needle involved in a Botox injection and a normal clean technique. The chance of infection is essentially zero and bleeding you can, if you hit a small vessel, you can cause a small bruise from a Botox injection. The second is allergic reaction. This is a foreign substance, so it could potentially cause an allergic reaction. And the product that is the least likely to cause an allergic reaction is Xeomin because it doesn't have that binding protein I mentioned earlier. So that's one less foreign substance that gets injected. You just get the toxin. And the third uh, complication is essentially um, misplacement of the product. So in other words, relaxing a different muscle other than the one intended. And that can happen. That is all injection techniques. So it's really important that you go to someone who really knows their anatomy and knows what they're doing. But any complication associated with an improper injection only lasts the length of the product, so basically three months. So that's the good thing. If you get an injection and you, you drop an eyebrow or you drop an eyelid, it won't last more than three months. If you guys would be interested in a video of the possible risks or complications associated with each injection site, what adverse things can happen, let me know. I can make a video about that. Otherwise, I will say it's just really, really important to find a good injector. Chances are you will not find a great injector on Groupon. I think the best way to find someone good is word of mouth. You 
not only get a recommendation, but frequently you get to see the results on someone else. And if you think they look nice, then chances are you would enjoy the results on yourself as well. If you have any additional questions, please leave them down below and I will see you guys in the next video. And I will, when I plan out my topic, I'll let you know on Instagram. So if you have any questions, you can drop them there for me as well. The ideal, but if you know, no barking. Come here. Where's your toy? Where is your toy? I forgot what I was talking about.